Uh, greetings from Dubai and thank you very much to organizers of uh, MENA conference for giving me the opportunity to talk about new approach to rehabilitation of stroke patients. Actually, I will try to uh, introduce two new techniques which are gaining uh, popularity. Uh, these are robotic technology and regenerative medicine. They are fast developing uh, approaches to the rehabilitation in the rehabilitation field. And uh, uh, one of objectives will be to explain the potential benefit of these novel strategies and to define eventually directions in future development. Uh, despite of uh, fast progressing diagnostic and uh, uh, medical treatment, stroke uh, remain as a major medical and social problem with estimated around 17 million people worldwide which experience the stroke each year. While incidents in developed countries somehow dropping down, it's not the case with low and middle income population where it's still increasing. So overall incidence on stroke is higher than before. Common risk factors staying the same, it's diabetes, hypertension, it's uh, cholesterol and bad habits like smoking. But a uh, focus on research recently is directly to the genetics. And uh, uh, one of study uh, recently published detected 22 new genetic loci related to ischemic stroke. Rehabilitation is a very important part of comprehensive care. And actually the main objectives of stroke rehabilitations are uh, first of all, uh, to prevent complication development or further complications, then uh, to restore the function as much as possible to promote independent life and eventually to reduce the economic burden, which is hard, which is very high actually uh, in management of uh, stroke uh, treatment. Motor function is almost always affected and uh, uh, that's why one of the main focus of rehabilitation and one of rehabilitation goals to improve and to restore uh, uh, affected motor function. There are many strategies which are so far developed, uh, but no one is good uh, enough to restore the function completely. And this remains as a major problem for stroke patients. One of treatment which has some kind of uh, support in the literature and some kind of scientific evidence is constraint induced uh, movement therapy. This is actually the strategy where the less affected uh, side is restricted and a uh, patient is encouraged to use affected side for different tasks and exercises. So idea is that repetitive uh, movements will improve the function eventually. The problem with constraint induced movement therapy is that selection criteria are very strict and probably more than 75% of patients with stroke doesn't fulfill this criteria. For example, if we have severe spasticity, if patient has very limited doors of fraction and cannot open the hand, uh, this treatment cannot be applied. <clears throat> According to Cochrane review, uh, not con convincingly actually uh, reduced disability. Even uh, we consider this as a more efficient uh, treatment. Uh, Cochrane said that uh, the disability is not much reduced with this therapy. Basically, uh, the strategy in classical rehabilitation of a motor function is to ask the patient to repeat as much as possible certain movements and to perform certain tasks, then it will be eventually, it will uh, lead to improve the, improve the function. And really Cochrane review showed improvements also small in arm and hand function as well as walking distance and walking ability. But the main question is how much repetition is enough? Some literature and some basic research claim that uh, it has to be almost 1000 movements daily to uh, provide some benefit. Of course, it's not a practical and uh, it's not possible to be realized. That's why the new technology actually is developing and finding the place in the rehabilitation field. And it is robotic technology. Robots are machines that are equipped with advanced control techniques to interact with the users. And one of the main advantages of robotic training is 
that it can provide highly repetitive movements, very precise uh, design, and, uh, uh, and especially over a prolonged period of time. So that means that patients can uh, use the robots for the whole day and can uh, repeat uh, as much as he, as he wants. And uh, there is no engagement of other medical staff, particularly physiotherapists. So this is the biggest advantage of a robotic rehabilitation, that humans are uh, much less engaged than in classical training. And there is one comparative studies which compare robotic movements with classical training, gait training or arm training. They found almost the same results, but the involvement of physiotherapists is much less uh, with, robotic, with robotic rehabilitation. Now, uh, there are registered more than 120 different devices for management only of upper extremities. That means it gained a lot of popularity and new and new products are in the market. However, not all of them are still in the practice. So basically, how robots can help to stroke patients, aside to allowing a more repetition without engagement of physiotherapists and other medical and paramedical professionals, robotic uh, equipment can help in other ways as well. First, we can divide the robots in those which are restoring the function, like orthosis, which are supporting the ADL activities, so patients can perform daily activities much easier. Then some of them are for treatment purpose. They can treat the hemiparesis, improve it, and also they can help in recovery of neurological system. Overall, we can conclude that theoretically at least, robots improve the functional status and quality of life of patients with a stroke. Regarding the application of robots, uh, they are roughly divided uh, in two parts, end effectors and exoskeleton. There are some differences between them. End effector robots are those that activate basically distal part of arm or leg, and they are designed to provide a better function of the hand or the ankle foot, for example. Uh, but uh, they, their use is limited. If movement is uh, less than 60, they are indicated for movements which are less of 60 degrees. And if it's more than 60, usually they are not functional and cannot be applied. And basically, they are more simple than an exoskeletal machine, and it, it may complicate the but it may complicate the control of the limbs who, who have a, who have a more than sixty degrees movement and who have movements in different directions. Exoskeleton are different from uh, end effectors because uh, they are uh, attached to several joints, not and they are controlling movements on more than one joint. So that's why they are more complex. Uh, they mimic skeletal structures and they are attached to each joint to support the movements. Uh, most of the time they are used for ambulance, for ambulance training to improve the uh, gait of the patients with a stroke as well as other neurological conditions. The third type of robots are those who are supporting ADLs. Uh, they are actually stimulating patients to live more independent and higher quality uh, of life, uh, usually designed for upper limbs power assistance, for example, for tremor suppression. They are basically light, they are lighter than other type of robots. They can be uh, easily handled and very important. They are not expensive. Can significantly improve the quality of life. For example, uh, with these robots, the patient is able to drink, to eat more independently, to perform uh, some other activities. Unfortunately, only few uh, few of these products are available available in the market right now. The next robotics are uh, for purpose of physiotherapy or physical therapy training. Uh, these, are, uh, these are very expensive uh, machines, expensive equipment, and at the moment they are basically uh, uh, placed in rehabilitation centers or advanced uh, uh, institutions. They are not used for home training, and they are not used uh, for um, uh, social activities. So the, uh, these robots are able, like Lokomat or GEO and other products, uh, they can provide active and passive movements, sense of touch, resistance, and of course, the gait training. 
high price is a limited factor. They are very expensive. And also another disadvantage is usually it takes time, uh, probably more than five minutes uh, to patients be prepared to use to use this robotic equipment. They, uh, they consist of platform, usually treadmill platform, but then uh, expansion or uh, supporting system and also a device which is attached to the extremities. So what is the future of robotic rehabilitation? According to the statement of American, uh, American uh, guidelines for stroke rehabilitation for adults, they stated that robotic devices for improving uh, mobility, that means the low extremity function may be considered and uh, uh, may be considered and uh, for improvement of upper extremity limbs function, they are reasonable to consider. Definitely, we need a lot of research in this area, which should uh, include comparative studies, uh, one, uh, machine, one equipment with the other, uh, that, that must be conducted to get conclusion about real benefit of robotic equipment. And in the future, we can expect further development of technology, which will make robot, robotic devices more sophisticated and more practical. And eventually, what we want to see finally use a robot in daily life, home use, uh, home use, and social activity use, rather than only for training person in purpose in rehabilitation institution. Training should be also conducted in uh, in real rather than environmental in uh, than in a virtual environment. The next new technology, which gained uh, more and more interest and popularity, uh, stem cells. Uh, they attract attention of scientists, clinicians, as well as our patients. So what are the stem cells? These are very specific cells in our body. They are undifferentiated cells with AB ability and potential to self-divide and differentiate into other types of specialized cells and eventually to restore the damage function. To put in simple words, when we are born, we are born with the form organs and organs are developed from the tissues and from the cells. So we have already uh, designed cells for certain organs uh, like osteocytes, which will produce the bone and also chondrocytes uh, producing the cartilage and, and uh, uh, myocytes for the muscles, tenocytes for tendons, etc. But we have a certain number of cells who are not designed for any particular organ. They are not differentiated. However, under certain conditions, especially for example, after injury, they have ability to divide and to differentiate in theoretically any type of other cells and will be able to replace or to repair uh, any organ which is damaged. So this is the theoretical concept of stem cells. And this is uh, these, they, they are specific features which make them a very interesting and attractive for science. There are many develop, there are many divisions of the cells, depends what we are looking for. For example, uh, regarding to origin of the cells can be embryonic and adult. Uh, regarding to their potency, totipotent, multipotent, pluri and unipotent. Uh, totipotent are not in the practice. Pluripotent are usually embryonic cells. Uh, there are uh, uh, legal issues uh, and medical issues here because uh, embryonic cells originally they produce the tumors like teratoma, and also we need to sacrifice the embryo, which is legally unacceptable. Um, a big interest in the last years uh, produced the induced pluripotent cells. They are discovered by uh, Japanese scientist Yamanaka. Uh, who actually designed the cells with the similar features as an embryonic, but uh, less harmful and actually uh, acceptable for, for the clinical practice. These induced pluripotent cells need further, further investigation development, but uh, they are uh, very promising actually for the uh, treatment of many conditions. Then we have very small embryonic cells. We don't know much about them. They are still not in the practice and they are subject of further further investigation. Uh, another division is depends on origin from which tissue uh, they are coming in, which kind of tissue they are forming, mesenchymal and hematopoietic. For us in the rehabilitation of the stroke and other patients, mesenchymal adult cells are 
uh, the most important because uh, they can uh, generate uh, uh, this mesenchymal, mesenchymal origin uh, structures and also uh, neuron-like uh, like, uh, cells that have a features of the neuron tissue. And another, finally, we can extract the cells from our body, we call them autologous or we can extract from the same species, but other person, they are allogenic, and finally from different species, but we call it xenogenic. Uh, it's important to know that uh, there is no uh, uh, immunological issues, immunological competencies uh, 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 regarding to stem cells, so there is no rejection, even if we receive the cells from other species. In stroke population, we use mesenchymal adult mesenchymal stem cells, which can be differentiated, as, you, as I said, in chondrocytes, osteoblasts, and neuron-like cells. They can be isolated from almost all tissues in mammals. Below, before uh, nine scientists believe that they are only placed in certain tissues like bone marrow and adipose, but now we know that almost uh, each uh, organ uh, in the human bodies. Uh, possess certain type uh, quantity of stem cells. In acute stage of stroke, uh, mesenchymal stem cells have a significant neurotrophic effect. We will talk about it uh, uh, later, about their mechanism of action, but basically it includes anti-inflammation, anti-apoptosis, angiogenesis, and eventually neurogenesis. There are a lot of published papers as a preclinical studies uh, which are that done on animals and which uh, provide a very promising results and prompt the scientists to try to, uh, uh, to translate into the clinical research and eventually application in clinical practice. Uh, two papers, two articles are uh, very significant. Actually, uh, one, uh, they talk about effect neural stem progenitor cells and immortalized neural, uh, neural stem progenitor cells uh, which are grafted intracerebrally uh, around the lesion of ischemic stroke. And also they can be applied through the venous system intravenously. Uh, that's found that these cells uh, provide a functional recovery in stroke patients. Actually, uh, uh, these are very uh, promising results. Uh, and the question was how these cells migrate uh, to the area of uh, ischemic uh, stroke, how they can find a place where they should be uh, to regenerate the damaged structures. Um, scientists believe that it's mediated by injury-induced chemokines, uh, like, like for example, some of them are stromal-derived factor one and monocytes hematocytic protein. So when injuries happen, when the stroke happen, it's coming production of these substances, and these substances somehow guide the cells to the right place. Another interesting observation uh, from one of study is that survival on transplanted cells is not always associated with functional recovery. This is very interesting because obviously we have a different therapeutic outcome in different patients and the question why it is so. One of answer is that in some cases the cells which reach the place or niche where the injury happened uh, don't establish proper interaction with the surrounding cells through the signaling system. And because if they don't interact with the cells which are already there, they cannot work and they cannot provide any therapeutic uh, improvement. Other studies use different sources of cells like bone marrow, umbilical cord, peripheral blood, and adipose tissue cells. They found that all above mentioned cells are associated with the functional recovery of ischemic stroke in experimental animal models. And again, conclusion that their migration is probably uh, explained by and mediated by injury-induced chemokines. It was found that transplanted cells, no matter how they were delivered, disappeared very fast from the brain area. This is, this is the finding which uh, changed complete uh, explanation of how the cells work. Uh, basically, uh, initially, somewhere, uh, 20 years and more than 20 years ago, the only explanation was that uh, cells are engrafted in the injured place and they start a uh, regeneration process or they start transformation into the new cells. Uh, this theory is not supported anymore. It's replaced by another 
the most accept more acceptable theory that cells which actually have a very short life uh, uh, in the body they stay not more than seven days they are producing certain uh, rigidity potential substances and these substances uh, actually make the work they are re regenerating the tissues this is so called paracrine effect or probably tropical effect rather than neural replacement uh, and it's it may it plays the major role the next study trying tried uh, to approach this to the clinical to the clinics and they uh, made combination of rehabilitation with the stem cells and they hypothesized that combined therapy can provide a better therapeutic outcome so this is the it's what we call today new field regenerative rehabilitation which is developing very fast to be more efficient in clinical practice, we need to answer some basic questions, which are still not answered at the moment and which are subject to very intensive research. For example, one of them, which type of cells from which origin is the most efficient? We have bone marrow, we have adipose, we have embryonic, we have induced pluripotent. Which one actually uh, is the best for stroke rehabilitation? Another uh, question is about the dose of the cells. How many million uh, of cells is enough? Uh, what is the minimum number of cells that can work and can be efficient? These are uh, the questions, again, without answer at the moment, and there is no uh, unique uh, uh, attitude in the science. There is no uh, unique um, uh, consensus. There is no basically consensus about it. The next question is a route of application. It can be, they can be delivered in different ways through the intravenous, intraarterial, or directly to the brain. Uh, still, we don't have um, uh, scientific evidence which of these methods is the most efficient. And finally, very important is proper selection of the patient. Obviously, not all stroke patients are eligible for the cells and not all of them uh, will respond favorably. Uh, they can be used in acute or subacute or chronic cases and where they are the most efficient, uh, it has to be explored in the future. So coming back to the key points, uh, what we can expect from this uh, treatment, from stem cells therapy, uh, we can expect that it works uh, in, uh, in different ways. They, they work not only through reorganization of neural network, but they can also reduce inflammatory process, ameliorate apoptosis and promote of angiogenesis. They can eventually support axonal regeneration and synaptic sprouting and um, possible to reduce uh, glial scars. Uh, two mechanisms, are, as I mentioned, uh, in place right now, uh, cell differentiation, which is uh, unlikely and please cannot explain, uh, be explained in many cases because the, the life of the cells is very short and uh, probably it is secretion of paracrine factor or, or so-called bystander effect. Um, recently, big attention is paid uh, to the role of extra vesicles as a vehicle. So these are substances, for example, uh, the most explored them are exosomes. These are substances which are detached from the membrane, the cells, and they are transferring uh, certain substances to other cells. Basically, there are vehicles for communication between cells. This communication and this signaling system between cells is one of the key factors for their efficacy. So uh, exosomes are very much uh, ex uh, investigated recently. Even we had in United States some ready-made exosome products which uh, are sold, which are sold actually uh, rather than extraction of the full cells uh, from the body. Now, clinical practice, what is published so far, there are not many articles and there are not high quality studies, but at least I pick up some of them which, uh, uh, which are promising, which gives some hope that in the future, uh, this might be eventually, regenerative medicine might be front runner in the rehabilitation of the stroke patients. One of these studies is open late prospective, it's 10 patients, the old studies suffer uh, uh, a, a small number of patients and uh, short follow-up. So this is one of uh, negative uh, points of uh, this research. So 10 patients, uh, all of them with ischemic stroke uh, with acute middle cerebral artery, artery occlusion. 
They use the bone marrow uh, uh, stem cells from ilia crest. Application was intravenous, follow up six months. In this study, out of 10 patients, one patient died, but cause was not related to the treatment. It was pulmonary emboli. In two patients, uh, stroke area expanded. That means there was some kind of deterioration, but uh, the other patients, seven other patients, uh, got functional improvement uh, without adverse reactions. Conclusion is that bone marrow extracted stem cells are safe and feasible for acute ischemic stroke patients. The next study included 24 patients. It's prospect prospective non-control. Uh, diagnosis are uh, chronic ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, source of stem cells, again, autologous bone marrow, mononuclear cells, and way application, either intrathecal transplantation, mainly intrathecal transplantation, followed by neurorehabilitation. Uh, follow-up is not mentioned, but it was uh, uh, not, not long-term follow-up. It was short. Results show that out of 24 patients, 12 improved in ambulation, 10 in hand function, 6 in standing balance, and 9 in walking balance. Also, it is observed that people younger than 60 years uh, get a better result than those above 60. Ischemic stroke responded better than hemorrhagic. Stroke uh, lasted less than two years, provide better result than if it's longer than two years. And finally, an interesting patient with a right brain involvement responded better than those with the left one. Conclusion is that uh, combination bone marrow mononuclear stem cells and neurorehabilitation is safe, feasible, minimally invasive, and viable option. Other studies, again, prospective single arm 10 patients, ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke patients. They use olfactory cells, neural progenitor cells, umbilical cord, mesenchymal, and Schwann cells. Application was intrathecal, intracranial, and thecal, and, and intravenous. Follow up six months to two years. And they concluded that all patients improved speech, muscle strength, muscle tension, balance, pain, and breathing. Conclusion is that this new strategy with injection of regenerative cells, different type of regenerative cells from different sources seems to be safe and beneficial at least in initial stage of chronic stroke. So future perspectives. Um, actually, the results are so far inconclusive, but with some tendency toward better functional outcome. There is tendency to better functional outcome. So better understanding of stem cells and their properties and their functioning is the most important. This is the key point, how they are acting, how they are interacting with their environment. Uh, what are the obstacles uh, for themselves to uh, develop and to provide uh, therapeutic effect? So this is the subject of intensive research right now. Another is proper selection of patients who might benefit of treatment. Obviously, not, of patient, not all of patients with the stroke are good candidates. And another is the most efficient route of application. We have many routes right now, and we don't know for particularly for stroke patients which one is the best. Then timing, dosage, and selection of uh, proper cells, these are another question. Safety profile is uh, high so far, but it needs to be confirmed in the long follow-up studies. So obviously, there is a lot of things to research. This is very exciting, there is very fast developing uh, medical field and uh, what we can expect uh, in the future to get answers at least to some of uh, the mentioned questions and to have uh, more patients treated with stem cells and better, better therapeutic outcome. Thank you very much.